Yo, what's going on guys? I'm talking currency farming, mapping strategy, end game, kind of like a mid investment strategy, what I've been running recently. What I got set up in my Atlas tree, what we're running for scarabs, how we're rolling our maps, um, which Eltrich we're having watcher maps, watch witness, whatever you want to call it. Um, Kirak, everything. So we're jumping to that. If you like, subscribe, you can come to me. I'll leave a comment down below what you're doing for end game. Like mid investment, I call it mid investment, but we're using a bunch of scarabs, so maybe you call it like, like closer to high end. But we're not doing like Galley Orb or anything crazy like that. So, um, let's jump into it. Let's jump into what I'm doing here. It's been a little bit. Builds coming along. We switched to summon skeletons because of what I wanted to do with these, with my strategy. It's just better. It's better for me. We got our our GG helmet. It can still get a little bit better, but it's pretty good. So. Let's jump into what I'm doing it and why I switched to skeletons and why it's so good with how I have my passives and my atlas set up. So the first thing you want to do is we're going to talk about the, my, at, my my passive tree. We got rid of pretty much all of like the all the Kirak stuff, all the all the extra map stuff. With with the way I'm running my maps, I'm getting so much pack drop and so much um, so much pack size and so much quant that maps are just dropping. Like I'm not I haven't had a problem sustaining T16s. It's it's just not an issue. So, follow along with me on this map because it's it's. I, I, it took me a while. I think I sat down for a couple out like an hour, trying to figure out like how to use every point efficiently to get what I wanted here. So, let's start from the top of the things that that are most were most important to me filling this out. First thing for me was expedition. I love expedition, expedition farming. I, I haven't run any logbooks yet, but I've been farming a bunch. So I went I went pretty big on expedition, grabbing all the nodes. Um, didn't grab this one. Don't grab this one. If you're planning on an expedition, if you are planning an expedition scarabs, get get the the polish expedition scarabs. It will do essentially this. I have not had a problem pretty much covering the entire screen with a polish expedition scarab without this. So um the two biggest things to take here with expedition are um these two are actually right here. Five percent increased vendor quality. Astragali is going for a lot again. People like rolling and gambling. So if you're an expedition, I recommend these two heavily. Um, extra remnants, extra suffix is huge. That's better, extra chance to get logbook drop. Um, I just grabbed all of them. They're all pretty good. Quantity of logbooks is the necessary one. This, this is the one I probably don't need anymore. I probably don't need this one anymore. It's nice as a backup. Sometimes I run out of scarabs and I, I just don't run expedition. It's nice to have a little chance of still in one. But this is the probably unnecessary one. We get a ton of points back if you don't use it. So if you're running scarab, you probably don't need these ones. But increased quantity artifacts is also really good. So keep that in mind. All right, next one. Uh, the one that I added in that I think was really important. It was just it was just so close to everything I was already trying to do. It was nice to add it in. It was breach. So we didn't go for these big nodes here, right? Um, four percent chance can breach. If we're doing breach, we're putting it on the map. We're using scarab or something. So these weren't huge. More magic monsters. Not really huge. Quantity of splinters would be nice and. The hands are like not not crazy to me so we didn't grab this breach node you don't have to grab every node like we didn't grab this breach node either they happen faster whatever okay like it'd be nice but it doesn't make the actual breach better so we, you don't have to do it what we did do is we like got better chance to get uh chayula breaches that's good breaches contain a boss awesome that's good drop double breach splinters that's really good <laughs> this breach node this is all really good, right? Like we can understand this is good. Okay, that, that's all good. This is all good stuff around here. We just extra chance to gain a boss. It's good. We grab the good parts of breach. All right, next up, one of my favorite mechanics, blight. But what we did interesting with blight is we came all the way around the top. Instead of instead of going from here, we came along the top to get to our our, our blight stuff. Um, because this is where the good blight nodes are. The blight nodes on here, are like okay. Like chance to live faster, and then the oil extractor, which I'm not super familiar with, but it could be really good. I, I've seen people say that it's really good, but I prefer the, the old-fashioned blight stuff. Two reasons. First reason, all right, oils found can be 20 or 10 tier, one tier higher. That's great. Blight's contain bot extra boss. That's really good. This is this one's really good. Modify have a chance to blight encounter. That's pretty good. More importantly, on this node, these four right here, one blight chest in here, four blight chests. Are lucky. It's so good. And then these, this blight node down here, you gotta take these. I think you're running blight. 
Um, areas of playing cards 20% gain additional playing cards. This seems to happen more than 20% of the time. Maybe it's just just what's happened to me. Also, I'm also running extra, you know, you get like a little extra percentage increases. In Blight, just have a chance to say Blight maps or else you'll see later. I have so many Blighted maps and oils stack up now. It's great. Great. And then the most important thing is we're running along the top because these nodes up here, these travel nodes along the top are way more valuable than the ones down here. You see a reason 2% increased effect of modifiers on non-unique maps. So that's increased quant, increased pack size, increased rarity. Good. And every node just a little bit. Adds up. It's more important than the stuff that we that we are. So we not super don't super care about map drop anymore. So, oh man, this is gonna get long winded. Apologies. Just it, this took me a long time. I'm very excited about. It. All right, next up, Harbinger. I'm gonna run through these other ones really quickly because they're not as important. Those are the three big ones. Harbinger. I just kind of they're they're really close to everything I was doing, so I just kind of capped them. Um, I think a lot of people are running Harbinger to the start. Just kept it on. We, we get a Harbinger every map. It Harbinger is also my backup scarab if I, if I run out. Um, strong boxes. We got strong boxes on. We have this strong box node for the guaranteed. This one for the operative strong box, and these ones for double currency and double div card, and better chance for uh, diviners and artisan strong boxes. Arcanist, not artisan. Sorry, arcanist. So strong boxes. Uh, I'm running those. We'll show you in a second how I'm setting these maps up. Um, Eat of the world, a little bit of Eat of the world stuff. Pack size is huge. Pack size is the most important thing. So we got these little nodes here that are 5% in pack size and then more chances to have altars. Makes Eat of the world a little bit better than Syrian Exarch because Syrian Exarch does not have this plus 50% chance. The altars are really good. Help with, with farming scarabs and, and maps and gems and maps and yeah, all sorts of stuff. Uh, and last thing, um, that's it. I had a little bit of heist on here for a while, but we got rid of it. My, my character is not really a heister, so we didn't really need it. But that'd be the next thing. That'd be the only thing I'd add. But I'm like, I'm, I'm also out of points, so I am out of points. So it's not happening. Um, what we can see with Expedition, Breach, Blight. My character is set up for like covering a lot of area and not really moving. Expedition, Breach, Blight are perfect for that. So my character matches my, my passive tree and what I want to do really, really well. I just, I bring up my summon skull, Val summon skeletons, I walk away from the computer and come back and everything's dead and the encounter's over. Pretty much how it works. So that's why I'm doing this. Build your map and build the way you're farming for what your character can do well. That's my advice. Let's talk about map, 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 map. Most important thing for map is pack size. Pack size determines, um, pack size most importantly determines how quickly your, um, you get the altars for each of the worlds. It's one of the big things. We, it was determined that that each individual Eldritch uh, minion has its own role on getting an altar or not. It's not based on the pack, it's based on how many are in the pack. Each individual minion, so pack size is super, super important, as always. So what I've been doing for maps is I just take a T16, let's just find one that's not Ancient City, whatever. There's some I like more than others, but we're, we don't do any of them, just chisel. Pretty common. Chisel, elk, find one we like. Sweet, we can do this one. And then I val it. If I val it and I can't run it, then we kind of walk away. This would be a, this would be like a really good map for me to run. Bullets. I'm not going to run it. It's going to take way too long with all these encounters for a video. But let's drop it in here. And you see that I already have everything set up basically for what, what I want to do. So I drop the map in. I have my Blight Scarab. I have my Breach Scarab. And I have a Harbinger Scarab right now. Normally this would be Expedition. I'm out of like... Uh, low end expeditions. I don't want to use my guild right now, but um, Harbinger is my backup because I have all the Harbinger nodes, so it's still good. And I'm close. To, I'm close on like exalted shards and ancient orbs are going up in price. So this is like a really Harbinger scarab are going up in price as well. So these are really good to use. Um, I'm using scarabs just that I have. I get them from from either the worlds, all that sorts of stuff. So it's really really good. You just kind of you're self replenishing scarab most of the time. That kind of through. Um, we have. Um, Eater of the Worlds on, of course, because I have all the nodes. And then the last thing we put on is we put on Ambush. Uh, four additional strong boxes. I have all, a bunch of the strong box nodes. So I end up with five, so I'm guaranteed one. And I get four additional strong boxes here. Roll them if it's a, a good one. Let her go. So that's how I'm running my maps. These maps get pretty intense, but my, my, my build's super, super good right now. It, it kind of rolls through with these still. 
Um, only a piece of advice, I think, is if you're in a map where you can do the boss before clearing the entire map, I would do that. Like like on Graveyard, I circle the outside till I get to the boss area, kill the boss, then do the rest of the map. Um, you kill the boss, the altars from either of the worlds don't offer the boss option anymore, and you get um, uh, the minion and player ones are, are typically better. Like chance to drop scarab, chance to drop stuff. Whereas the boss is like, drop three scarabs. Drop, drop two maps, unique items. Hope we'll very success with those. So that's why I'll leave it. If you got any comments? Leave them down below. Let me know what you think of this. Um, what you're doing for currency, high-end farming, medium investment, whatever you want to call it. Um, hit like, hit subscribe, check out my Twitch down below. And also, thanks for watching. Thanks. Bye.